So uh, we are taking quite the the subject uh, divergence, I guess, uh, and we're going to be joined now by Chen, who's talking about Japanese art uh, in France and the representation of feminil femininity from a female perspective. So I will hand over to you, Chen, if you want to share your screen. So, hi, I'm Jin. I'm a fourth year history of art student. So during my study, I noticed one thing that is we've seen a lot of artworks that are by men, but represent women and shape the definition of femininity. So today I'm going to focus on women artist works instead. I will use Marika Sat, an American expatriate artist working in France, as an example to talk about how Japanese art facilitated the representation of femininity in 19th century France from a female perspective. So it's International Women's Day today, so it seems like an appropriate topic, but why should we be interested in this particular history? I made this diagram to show that Japanese, um, Japanese art, among a number of foreign cultures, played a crucial role in the development of modern art. However, the history of modern art tends to marginalize, if not exclude, women artists. Studies about, about Japanese art also tends to follow a formalist approach that is highlighting the stylistic and technical influence on Western art, artists, which inevitably concentrate on male creativity because men formed the majority of artists at the time. It overlooks a, um, a cultural, specifically gender dimension of the Japanese influence. So by examining the reception of Japanese art in France by women artists, my project seeks to recognize the significant roles that women artists also played in the past and how they shaped the art history as we understand it today. So um, how did Japanese art in France become related in the first place? After Japan was forced to open its border to foreign trade, after two centuries of national isolation in 1858, Japanese art, especially prints, were imported in large quantities into Western countries like France, where they quickly became immensely popular among the local audience. This popularity can be attributed to the exotic charm of the print, but also to the artistic context in France, where the stagnation of Western art, which was based on Greco-Roman tradition, called for a reformation of the entire system of art. So at that time, Japanese art provided a much needed model, model by representing a thoroughly foreign culture. So in the context where Western, uh, Western traditions and order, both artistic and social, were disrupted by an oriental culture, women artists had the opportunity to increase their visibility in the, uh, in the male-dominated art world and patriarchal society. This opportunity for women was dependent on the Western perception of Japanese art. From the outset, Japanese, art, uh, Japanese aesthetics was not neutrally translated into the Western context. In fact, most of the artistic, artistic assimilation was based on, was informed by the Western perception of Japanese art as a liberating tool against Western traditions. This, this perception was to some extent based on an Orientalist agenda in a broader context, which constructed Japan as an exotic other. So here on the screen, I'm showing a passage from a French novel, Manet Salomon. It depicts the moment when the male, male protagonist seeks refuge in his collection of Japanese prints to escape from the social reality in Paris. His fascination with a sensory pleasure in these prints is suggestive of the general cultural attitude toward Japanese art at the time and how male artists tended to use Japanese aesthetics as a vehicle for expressing their fantasies of the opposite sex. And in this process, some recurring motifs in Japanese art like the iconic kimono acquired an erotic overtone. In the painting on the left by James Tiso, for example, a distinctly white woman is standing in a pose as if she is a ma mannequin, offering the exotic garment as well as her body to, uh, to the viewer's gaze. This explicit display of a Western woman's sexuality is predicated on the Orientalist construction of Japanese art as the product of an alien culture, which legitimized the transgression of Western cultural norms that restricted the depiction of the nude of contemporary Western women. However, while Japanese art, or rather the Western interpretation of Japanese art, sanctioned the masculinist perspective that viewed women through an objectifying lens, it simultaneously um, empowered women artists. Whereas women were officially prohibited from depicting the nude according to Western codes of propriety, they gained freedom in the Japanese context. For America Sat, the coiffure is one, uh, is one of a set of prints she created in response to a major exhibition of Japanese art in Paris, 
and it is the only finished work that depicts female nudity in her entire oeuvre. Consciously distancing herself from uh, Western norms, Cassidy even stylized the frontal exposed breasts to create an abstract effect, which prevents eroticization of the woman and hence avoided perpetuating a male perspective of the female body and femininity. So this, trans so this transgression of gender norm by depicting the nude shows that Japanese art liberated uh, women artists like Cassatt from the Western context and enabled them to explore the representation of women free from conventions established by men. And this is particularly important in the context of 19th century France, where the society was structured by sexual difference. While men dominated the public sphere, the, the uh, women were the respectable middle-class women occupied the private and domestic sphere. Lives in different spheres did not tend to intersect. So when the male artist Edgar Degel attempted to depict scenes in the boudoir where women's most intimate life was centered, he was accused of voyeurism and even misogyny. It's known that Degel collected Japanese masters like Katsushika Hokusai and was thematically as well as technically inspired by them to portray women in this kind of spontaneous but somewhat awkward posture to convey the movement and immediacy of the scene. This strategy is in line with Degas' realist inclination in art in general, but it suggests that the artist essentially viewed a woman as an object posing for his observation and, and for his art, instead of an independent subject who's living, in, who's living in her own space and living her own life. So in contrast, Cassatt adapted the formal language of Japanese prints to capture women in the private sphere in a naturalistic yet, dig yet dignified manner. In woman bathing, the naked upper body is turned away and rejects voyeuristic gaze, while the vigorous line that Cassa learned from the Japanese prince firmly delineates the curve of the back, which highlights the, highlights the uh, corporeality of the woman. And also, echoing the stripped drapery, the bent upper body is sensuous, yet not eroticized, which alludes to the female sexuality that, that respectable women were denied by bourgeois ideology at the time. So through these comparisons, we can see that Cassas Prince departed from both Western artistic conventions and traditional definition of femininity, which was imposed upon women by men who had occupied a more powerful position in the patriarchal society throughout history. So what Japanese offered Cassid, what Japanese art offered Cassid was not only a license, but also the means to challenge Western uh, traditions and norms. But of course, Cassa was also conscious to adapt Japanese models in accordance with her vision of contemporary Parisian women. So comparing the bath, the print in the middle, to the one on the left by Kitagawa Wutamalo, we can see that Cassette referenced the theme as well as the composition to portray the a mother absorbed in the task of taking care of her child. However, the woman in Cassette's print is fully clothed. She's not exposing a more, part of the, more part of the body other than her hand and her face. And she is in a more demure posture, which reflects 19th century bourgeois women's general compliance with codes of decorum. And also the mother and child do not seem to interact with each other, but they are nonetheless firmly bound together by the woman's physically and emotionally by the woman's powerful grip, which holds the child closely to her body. So therefore, Casa represented an alternative, an alternative image of motherhood. Which, which conceives of the woman as an independent entity, whose identity is informed by, but not entirely dependent on her maternal and wifely role in the family, as Renoir's painting of, uh, Renoir's depiction of maternity suggests. So to conclude, Japanese art not only supplied Western artists a novel artistic vocabulary to challenge Western, to revitalize Western art, but also challenged cultural norms like gender role and um, and social propriety that defined femininity and regulated women's lives. Western women like Cassatt used it to carve out a space to practice art and to reconsider representations in art, which they wouldn't have had access to in their native context. Cassatt's adaptation of Japanese aesthetics into her color prints, which reveal a different and distinctly female perspective of the female body and the, and the bourgeois women's lives, shows her negotiation with artistic traditions established by male creativity and the prevalent notions that were entrenched in the patriarchal society. So following a, following a feminist approach to art history and paying attention to female creativity instead, we can recognize that women artists also played an important role of, uh, as, the, as culture, culture producer 
and we can discover an alternative an alternative side of modernity that was was experienced by women and defined in, by uh, defined by their terms, which was often left out in art history. And that is it. That's it. Thank you for listening. Um, is there any question for me? Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Jen. Uh, fascinating. And again, that the jump of topic, I just think is is so cool. Um, and really, really nicely done. Uh, and there is there's a question here. Um, asking, uh, in essence, <laughs> flipping your discussion to say, did any similar type of influence go back from France to Japan in Japanese art? Do you know anything about it going the other way? Yeah, certainly, because of course, not only Japanese art was, was present in France, but there were um, some from some Western art, not necessarily French, but uh, from other European countries, and even America, that were imported into Japan. And and more and more Japanese artists at that time were uh, more receptive to the Western aesthetics and well, Western knowledge in general. So they were really receptive to the Western style. style. And of course, there are a lot of Japanese artists who incorporated Western um, well, aesthetic principles into their art. But of course, I'm, I'm not really sure. And I can't really give an, an example at the moment. Yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. Cool. Yeah, but yeah. there are, definitely. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, and then the second question is, do we see Japanese art offering similar disruptions in other countries or is there something unique about France? Um, so does this this kind of pathway of transmission happen elsewhere? Do you know? Well, I'm focusing on France because it was an sort of an artistic center of the world at, a, at that time. So a lot of artists from, from different parts of the world, from well, from Germany, from America, they all went to France. So a lot of artists produced their art in France, but it's definitely not a unique context. So as, as far as I know, um, a lot of American artists who, who are actually working in America were, and, and they also produced art that shows the same, the similar kind of well, disruption. Cool, great, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, any other questions that I'm missing? No, great, and thank you very, very well done with the questioning there as well. And and just again, such a cool topic. Um, it's not something I have. Uh, I know we spoke about this before. It's not something I've ever come up against before, never looked at before. But really, genuinely fascinating topic. So, so thank you very much. Um, so again, round of applause, please, for Chen, uh, either via the button on the bottom or in the chat. Um, and thanks very much, Chen. Yeah.